Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with great recordings you've never heard of. And today we are featuring this one. Oh, this is such hot stuff. If you could still find it, that is. Gabrielle Pierney's complete ballet, not the suite, Cydalise et le Chevre Pied. That's Cydalise and the Satyr. That's what a Chevre Pied is. It's a goat foot. It's not a cheese. Chevre Pied is foot cheese or something. No, it's not. It's, it's, it's a satyr, a mythological creature. I have no idea what's happening with the satyr in this ballet. I looked, I looked at it and I, I mean, there is a plot and I mean, maybe we should try and talk about the plot. I don't know. Let's see if we can find it. Um, it, it has a plot. Usually plots of ballets are rather simplistic, but uh, who knows? Maybe we can, maybe we can make some sense of it. Let's see. Le, le, the argument. Okay, so yes, there's an argument. Um, there are the, the enchantments, the interpreters. Here we go, the argument. Let me get my, my thing out here. It's a ballet, in case you were wondering. Yeah, um, it, it's a ballet, and it was composed in, in around the same time as Ravel's Daphnis and Chloe, a little bit later, I believe. Um, I think I can come up with a date here, but let's see. Um, and it takes place in ancient Greece, like Daphnis and Chloe, and it has a wordless chorus, like Daphnis and Chloe, but it's it's a neo-Baroque confection. There's a harpsichord in it, and like all kinds of other stuff happening here. So let's see what let's see what happens here. Well, here we go. Uh, introduction: Invisible forest and the chorus. The moon slowly rises, um, and they dance a lot. Dryads and you know mythological gujis and. And, oh, I can't do this. It's all so silly. I mean, what's the point? I mean, and it's too small. The type is too tiny. And, and you know, it's in it's, it's fading. And, and I can't make out any of this. So let's just talk about, let's just talk about the music, shall we? It's glorious. Um, what does this say? Around 1924 was, was written. Life is too short. It's just great music. It really is. You know, I, I like to try and sound terribly, terribly, uh, like scholarly when I talk about these things, but you know, sometimes you just want to listen to music and you play the music and it's so gorgeous. You say, ah, the hell with it. We don't care when it was performed, when it was written. So we have here the Orchestra Philharmonique de Luxembourg under David Shallon on the timpani label. There it is. And I, I have talked about this recording before. I've mentioned it before, but I, I can't mention it enough. This was the first complete recording of the entire work. And it's a long work. I mean, it, it, it plays for about an hour or maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. So 73 minutes and 39 seconds. So it's a really serious piece. I mean, it's longer than Daphnis and Chloe. Um, it, unlike Daphnis and Chloe, which is a symphonic, a choreographic symphony with motives that's, that are very fluid and continuous, this has actual numbers in it. And most people know at least at least one of the numbers here, the March of the Adorable Little Fauns, or whatever they're called, the little little satyrs or little little Greek mythological tchotchkes, whatever you call them. Um, and it's it's delightful, and it's in it's in the beginning here. Let's see where is it? Um, it's it's called Les Coldi Agipans, the school of this this guy thing. That's where that march shows up. Um, and then you have a, a bunch of tableau. Um, and there's like a, 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 I'm not telling this very well, am I? I no, I'm not. It's awful. I'm, I'm sorry. I have to apologize. I just put this thing on and it's so enchanting. It really, really is. There's a divertissement within the ballet. That's what I was trying to say. Just like there's a Baroque confection within like Tchaikovsky's uh, The Queen of Spades, Peak Dom. You know, there's a whole, there's a whole sort of, you know, pastiche type thing. And Pierre does that too. Pierre was the French Mahler in some ways. In other words, he was a composer and a conductor, foremost in his career, a conductor, but also a very, very fine composer. He wrote a limited number of pieces. Um, they're pretty extraordinary. I mean, there's some really great stuff by Pierre I've got my, my right here, actually, if I look back, I've got sort of the Pierre section. I just dropped something there. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll find it later. But you've got these orchestral work collections. There's three discs of his stuff, at least, of orchestral music on timpani, including Impressions de Music Hall. And I've reviewed all this stuff on classicstoday.com. 
you can look up here today. And then there's this this lovely bis disc, you know, Ramuncho and 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 the piano concerto in C minor, um, which is also there's a bunch of things here on Hyperion, a Pyrenee Romantic Piano Concerto series, number 30, 34, 31, something like that. That's there. And and here's the suite from Sidelise et le Chevre Pied on EMI. So that stuff is all available. Um, and there's also there's also a nice Pyrenee disc on Chandos. You know, he's around. He's out there. He didn't write much in the usual forms, like symphonies and whatnot. But this is his masterpiece. And a masterpiece it really is. And if you can find this recording, let me just make it very, very simple. Forget everything I said at the beginning, and I'm sorry I wasted your time. Just get this disc and listen to this music. It is, it is absolutely to die for. And you'll be amazed that this masterpiece just never gets played. Nobody knows the whole thing. Nobody pays attention to it. Nobody pays much attention to Pierre Ney. It's, it's, it's a crime. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for putting up with me. Take care.